Today we're going to set up a burner box using VirtualBox. Now a burner box is a virtual desktop. Uh, we're going to show both Windows 10 and Ubuntu Linux. Uh, but that burner box is something that runs as a virtual machine within your machine. And then if anything bad were to happen, like you get a virus, you can just roll back to a previous instance, a previous snapshot, uh, or delete it entirely and start over. That way your machine, your main desktop, doesn't get affected if you do things within the, the dark web or some of the more seedy places of the internet. I'm not going to walk through installing VirtualBox. It's quite simple. Just download the program, run it, follow the prompts, and you should be all set. If you have any problems, they've got awesome documentation. Once you have VirtualBox installed, you're going to see a dashboard similar to this. Now you can see I have a bunch of other virtual machines already created. Uh, we're going to create a new one today for Windows 10 and Ubuntu Linux. Now the first step is to download a ISO for each of the operating systems. Uh, it's actually very simple to do and Windows actually provides the ISOs available for you to download uh, and install. Now these are going to be unlicensed Windows 10 instances. Uh, you would need to buy a separate uh, license key in order to operate it even within a virtual machine. Uh, but I'll show you how to get that started and then you can go ahead and register it later. So the first step is to come to the Windows 10 download page. Uh, it's easiest to just Google that and pull up the correct URL. Um, but once you get here, it'll look like this. And what you want to do is you want to download this Windows 10 install media tool. Uh, and it's an executable that'll run once you download it. When you first run the media tool, it's going to do a few checks to see what type of a machine you're running on. It's going to determine if you need to upgrade your machine or if you're building new media. Uh, that might take a few seconds to load. Uh, then you're going to get the terms of service. You can go ahead and go through those. And then it's going to do some additional checks. Once you get this prompt, you're going to want to select the second option that says create a disk. And we're after this ISO file right here. Uh, so go ahead and select that. Click next. It's going to ask you some defaults. You can go ahead and leave these as the same. And then on this last screen, we want to make sure we select the ISO because we don't want to build a flash drive. We want to actually have the file to load. And then we're going to go ahead and click Next. Now you're going to want to pick a location to install it. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and download it to my install directory and I'm going to press Save. So this might take a minute or two to download, uh, so we'll go ahead and pick it up when we're done. So now that we have our Windows 10 ISO, we're going to go ahead and create a new virtual box. Uh, so go ahead and click the New button. And it's going to ask you, what do you want to create and what do you want to call it? I'm going to call this Windows 10 Demo. And then you want to make sure that you use the Windows 10 64-bit. It should come up automatically, but make sure it does. And then we're going to want to grab a little bit more memory. I'm going to go about 4 gigs of memory. Uh, my machine has 16, so that's plenty. Uh, Windows 10 is extremely slow uh, running in a VM, so the more memory you can give it, the better. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use the virtual disk. We're going to go ahead and create that now. Now it's going to ask us about the hard drive. Uh, this is going to be the default, about 32 gigs, which is probably fine for a burner box. If you plan on doing more, you may want to increase that. You can leave everything else the same. Go ahead and click Create. So that should just take a second to create, but it's not actually doing anything at this point. It's just creating that virtual machine. Now we're going to go ahead and attach that ISO as the CD-ROM drive. Uh, so go ahead and press Settings, and then on the Storage tab, you're going to see Empty. And let's just go ahead and select a disk. So we can go ahead and say choose from file. And then wherever you saved your Windows 10 ISO, you can go ahead and select that and press OK. And what this is doing is it's mounting that ISO as a CD. So it's just like if you were to put a CD in an actual machine. Uh, so now when we run this virtual machine, it's going to try to boot off of that CD. So let's go ahead and click OK. All right, so let's go ahead and start our VM for the first time. And it's going to boot off of that CD drive just like it would if it was a regular machine, a physical machine, uh, except this is all going to do it virtually. So it's going to load that ISO in, and now it's going to look just like a normal machine is for the very first time when you're installing Windows. You'll notice a couple things are going to pop up here, and these are quite important because what will happen is the virtual machine might capture your mouse or your keyboard and lock it, uh, and you won't be able to release it. Uh, the way you release it is, is you press the uh, right control key on your keyboard. Not the left one, it's got to be the right one. Uh, and you'll see that information says right here what that release key is. So if you lose your mouse or your keyboard, just press that key and then it'll unlock it. So we're just going to run through this real quick. Uh, we're going to use the default settings for the install. We're going to go ahead and press install. Now you're going to get this prompt here since this is an unregistered copy because it's a virtual machine, it doesn't have the key. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and click the I don't have a product key for now. 
And what will happen is, is this will be an unregistered version of Windows. You can go ahead and register it once everything gets installed. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just use the Pro, although if you want, you could use one of the other versions. And then we'll have to accept the terms and services. Now on this screen here, uh, there's a couple of things you can do. You can go ahead and just say, hey, do whatever uh, because it's a blank VM. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say custom install. Now it's going to have one uh, partition. I'm going to go ahead and say new, apply, OK. All right, hopefully you survived the install um, and just followed through the prompts. Most of it's pretty straightforward. Uh, when you get to this step, this might be a little bit confusing, especially if you didn't set your original computer up. Uh, it's asking for two options. You definitely want to say set up for personal use uh, because we're not going to have a domain controller or anything like that. Uh, now, Windows now has some options to using the Outlook um, and some of the Microsoft platform in order to set up. Uh, and this can get a little bit confusing right here because if you go down the path of creating an account, um, you'll have to verify email and all of that. Uh, the trick is, is you want to click this button here that says offline account. And then by doing so, what it does is it allows you to just simply create a user on this machine. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and say will. And it's going to try to continue to convince you to go the other path, but you don't want to. Uh, now I'm going to just skip the password because this is a VM uh, and I'm not actually going to do anything with it. In fact, it's going to get destroyed as soon as this video is done. Uh, if you want, you can go ahead and create a password. Now we couldn't care less about the Cortana, um, so we're just going to go ahead and say no. Uh, and then it doesn't really matter on these, especially on a VM. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and leave everything on. Uh, if you want and you're concerned about security, you can disable some or all of those. All right, we made it to the end. Um, that probably would have taken 20 minutes or so on your machine, depending on a lot of factors. Um, it doesn't really matter what you say on the network. Again, we're just networking with ourselves at this point, so we're going to go ahead and say yes. Uh, and now we actually have a, a Windows machine uh, that's completely virtual and it's uh, independent of our existing machine. So uh, while it does share a network, uh, that's about the only thing it does share. So, I mean, you need to be a little bit careful, but uh, in general, this will provide you some good isolation. So now there's one thing that we need to do. You see there's a couple of pop-ups here that indicate the, the capturing and so forth of the mouse and keyboard. Uh, and also, if we rescale this window, it won't auto scale uh, to exactly the same size. Uh, there's an easy fix for this. If we select the devices and we say install the uh, guest uh, OS additions, uh, it'll actually mount a, CD, a virtual uh, CD and it'll go ahead and install some programs from VirtualBox on this VM uh, to kind of help those. Uh, it doesn't auto start for some reason, uh, but if we just go ahead and launch the Explorer, we can go in and launch that. This will just take a few seconds to install, then it'll ask you to reboot. Uh, so go ahead and say yes to the reboot, and then when we come back, we'll be all ready to go. All right, so now we're back from the reboot, and you'll see now the screen actually auto resizes uh, to exactly whatever your resolution is. A few other things that that uh, um, add-ons will let you do is it will allow you to share a keyboard across your host and your virtual machine, so you can copy paste things back and forth. Uh, and also does support a drag and drop if you want to move a, a file or a program onto it. So that concludes our video of installing a Windows 10 virtual machine using VirtualBox. Uh, the next video we're going to install Ubuntu Linux as a VM as well. And we'll actually use that Ubuntu box more moving forward just because it runs a lot more efficiently and it doesn't have the same licensing requirements as the Windows operating system. If you like this video, be sure to head over to our Deep Web University where you'll find more videos, white papers, and articles about open source web harvesting for your business. I would also invite you to join our monthly newsletter where we send out exclusive insights and partner updates. If you're ready to continue learning, I've got a couple videos already queued up for you.